Hi guys, welcome to Root Stem, and in this video we're going to go through some basics of airbrushing. So I'm going to teach you how to airbrush, but we're also going to paint a mantic zombie dragon while airbrushing because this will teach us about, hopefully teach us, about all the different techniques that you're going to require when using an airbrush. If you're not interested in the, because you already know how to airbrush, I will put a time code in the comments so you can always skip forward. And then, of course, just have a look at how I painted this quite nice figure, although I believe the one that I'm actually painting is secondhand. Um, and it was given to me as a commission uh, from one of the lads at the club. So I'm going to go through some of the basics first off, and let's begin. So I've already got a video that I kind of recorded last year that had the basic equipment that I particularly use. What I'm gonna do this year is to just go through it. So I'm gonna go through a step-by-step -step process of what I'm doing um, so that people can get an easy grasp and follow along. Something that tends to happen quite often with videos like this is that people will kind of assume, I do it, I am guilty of it as well, but we kind of assume that we know what certain techniques you are using. So in this video, I'm going to go through lots of different techniques, actually. And uh, we're going to pretty much do all of this with the airbrush, with paints, with the brushes. Because, of course, I always find that what happens when somebody starts airbrushing is that they think everything's airbrushed. And it isn't. You still need to go in there with traditional techniques. And, of course, sorry, camera knock. You still need to go in there with a trusty old brush. Right. So... Uh, I've already got a video, like I say, which I'm going to put a link on, uh, which will show you what I am currently using. I'm still using it. Um, it's very dirty <laughs> because it needs a proper good clean. But life and trials of having too many figures to paint, you kind of continue. And as you can see, uh, we've got some bodged up repairs. But these ha things happen. If you've ever gone into uh, engineering or you've gone into a car mechanics place, you'll see stuff like this all the time. Okay, so we've got the base body, we've got his wings, which I'm going to do separately. Uh, I have sprayed them, not sprayed them very well, but that's because we're pretty much going to be going over them uh, with a lot of original paint anyway. And we've got the rider. And the rider, as you can see, has been converted. It's not the normal vampire rider that you get with this particular model. But what we're going to do to start with is what's called, like a, I believe it's called Xenophil Highlighting. If I'm wrong, please correct me in the comment section below. And we're going to kind of use our Game Air Vallejo Game Air White. The reason I use Vallejo Game Air White is because it's the only white I've actually found that doesn't mess up when you are airbrushing it. Um, creating your own whites always go, seem to go wrong. It's a high pigment. So you tend to find that when you're airbrushing, it gets blogged up real quick. It's not the greatest, and it's not the greatest colour to work with. So we're going to start with the most difficult colour. Um, straight off the bat, woohoo. So basically, what I'm going to be doing is to just pick up certain points, maybe just going over certain bits that's going to be illuminated. So maybe that bit there on the chest, across the face, and then, of course, down the back. And we're going to try and give it like a highlight, um as if it's a black and white picture. It's probably the best way of explaining it. We've got our cup, we've got our white paint ready, and we're effectively gonna pour it in now. I still, to be honest with you, um, don't think that this is thin enough. So I'm gonna put a little bit, it's, it is an air paint, so I'm not gonna use water, but I'm gonna put a little bit of floor improver in there. And I'm just, if you can see, I'm just covering the bottom. Apologize for the compressor noise. So as you can see there, I'm just zooming. I'm just kind of covering the bottom. And now I'm going to add my white. Add it a bit at a time. And it's going to mix in there. I'm going to get a, a brush. And I'm going to stir it. Now what I do when I've got my brush, I get a bit of a stiff brush when I'm stirring this. And I have a look to see how it runs down the side. Now that to me is a little bit thick. I would like it to run like it's skim milk. See for some so a bit more of a mix and just starting to get the consistency that I'm actually after. I always as well do a like a back draft. So because this is a quite a funneled edge, I can't really do it on this. So I've actually got this is from those little, you know, like the gardening poles that you can get. And it's just a little cap that I sort of stick on myself and then gently 
put some air into it and kind of percolate or make it blow back into the pot and that will give it a nice lovely mix now before i spray anything onto a figure zoom back out a little bit we're gonna just take that away i do spray into a cardboard box not very safe i know i'm going to press down i'm at i am currently at 30 psi this is how i like to work um so i'm going to squeeze down and then gently pull back on the trigger there we go so we're getting our white and if we do it movement we're not getting a lot of running don't do that because what you'll get as you can see is a puddle and it'll start to run all over the figure because it'll not be dry i also as i've probably mentioned in previous videos i've got a handy toothbrush and i just try and wipe the end as best as i possibly can apologies for knocking the camera so we're going to i'm hoping this works and it doesn't mess up so we're going to start by spraying effectively the face and just giving it a bit of a highlight and i'm doing it from an angle because this is where to me the light would be hitting the figure and again don't spray it don't be like as if you're a spray can this isn't a spray can now i did want a little bit of this to be whited as well so i'm going to gently pull back the trigger Now getting a little bit of flecking so little spots are coming through so i'll try and make sure to clean that needle if you need to remove any little protector from the end now that sometimes can cause problems i have had it stabbed me in the foot by accident before uh, <laughs> but and now we're just going to pick all the raised surface areas and you can be a bit artsy with this you haven't got to pick certain raised areas you can just pick you can be specific in your uh, dealings with it. As you can see, again, I'm just gonna, because it's a white, this will happen quite frequently. So always try and clean the nib as best as you possibly can. And I don't really want it, as you can see, I'm not wanting it on the scales. Or them ridges on the back i'm just wanting it in particular areas so now that the reason for this is to help highlight the areas that we want to be slightly brighter than the original coloring I'll just go over that a little bit more so i am going over this again and i've just realized i kind of do need to tell you about a particular point so as you can see that looks a little gray when it starts to dry it does dry duller than what you're putting it on on so if you wanted that to be a gradient if you put a bit more just in the center rather than being towards the edge you'll get a nice looking transition between the light and the dark Now, airbrushing is like working in paint layers. So the more layers you put on, the brighter the color you're going to get. And I'm really wanting the nose to be highlighted. So we're going to wait for that to dry properly. While we've still got white in the pot, let's get the others done. So we've got our Xenophil highlight on all of the figures. As you can see, I've kind of left them a little bit dark because mainly the focus is going to be on the wings. I've got a bit on the arm because, of course, it's going to match with this. And uh, once, as you can see, because that's dry a little bit, it's not as bright as I want it to be. So I'm just going to a bit more like i say don't forget a little bit there as well to keep cleaning that nib when you're using brighter colors keep cleaning the end of your needle 
it will stop a lot of problems later on, especially when it starts to blog up. Right, so for me, that's done. I've not done a lot of Zenithal highlighting on the rider apart from the cape because I think the cape is going to be the one, the focus, the main focus, whereas the rest of the rider is not really going to be that much of the actual focus. Um, I'm probably going to hand paint majority of that, but Zenithal highlighting can actually help with your normal hand painting. So I'm now going to clean my airbrush. So I've got some water, which I put into an old floor improver bottle, and I'm just going to over make it really runny. And then I'm going to get my plug, hold it on the end, and I'm just going to back floor. And then, if you haven't got a cleaner, you can actually, if you spray it into a bottle, just to get rid. Now you can tell... Well, doing this, you can tell if not, you, if your airbrush is blocked, because if you watch, if it's not coming out, or it's coming out really slow, you probably know that you've got a bit of a blog coming on. Now, I always work the trigger backwards and forwards when cleaning, because sometimes you might get a bit of paint that's come through, and then you can not kind of scrape it off, or and then spray it out. Now, I've done that once. Sorry if I can knock in the camera. I'm going to be doing that a lot. I'm going to do it again. I'm also going to make sure that it's clean. Still got a bit of white in there. Now, I am not, because I've got to go... Because while I'm recording this, I'm also... I'm going to be uh, doing other things, so I'm not going to be using the airbrush a bit. So I'm going to clean it out properly. So I'm going to give it another go. Normally, I'd probably just put some more paint in, blast it out, and then continue. You haven't got to do a total clean every time you wanted to use your airbrush, which is what puts a lot of people off because they think that every time you use a single colour, you've then got to strip it down. You haven't. All right, so I'm going to one more. And then I'm going to put a bit more water in. So this is, yep, like I said, it's quite a lot of water. But And I've got some Vallejo uh, airbrush cleaner. Now, I like using Vallejo's airbrush cleaner because it's also a lubricant at the same time. So it gets to work in the channels. Now, I'm going to spray it, spray it, spray it. Now, remember, this is what I do. This is me trying to teach you guys the techniques that I have learnt. If you think I'm wrong, you don't have to follow them. You can actually do other techniques yourself. We're going to spray it out. See little bits of white going in there. So, these will be nice and dry so I can just move them. Airbrushing, you can, it does actually dry quite quick is a good thing right now i am now going to just turn my air my compressor off and i'm going to quickly just go through and clean certain sections of my airbrush now while cleaning it i'm probably going to use some water and some airbrush cleaner and i'm going to use these are uh, you know them flannel cloths um it's like a i don't know if i call them a j cloth or something and I use that particular type of cloth because it doesn't break up. You can't use tissue because if you use tissue, tissue is made of it's made of paper, effectively paper fibers, and it starts to break down and it'll get clogged up and it'll mess up with your actual airbrush. And so while I've got that in there, I'm going to shove it in, give it a swirl round. I'm not cleaning, cleaning because I'm still working. You can use sonic cleaners. That's always a good idea. And look, and sometimes another reason why I like to do this in there, if I just zoom out a little, I will, might be little flecks of paint inside, and these you can kind of squirt. So I will, and then I'll kind of jet bits of water on while there's nothing in the end, 
and it should then clean it out. And again, sometimes leave a little bit of water on there. And I always check to see if I can see my finger through that. If not, because sometimes it's painting, give you a, a bit of a blow. And then you can kind of tell if you look down the needle, if you look actually down, I mean, I'm not going to be able to show you on camera, but if you look down it, you can kind of see if it's blocked or if it's clear. But you do need to get the paint out of the way first. That one is actually clear. But I managed to get all of it out. So I'm going to put it back on. You can take these two to pieces, but uh, once I've been to, I'm actually going to collect my daughter from school. So once I've gone and collect my daughter from school, I am going to come back and start doing a bit more airbrushing. So I'm not going to break that down too much. Needle's been clean. I'm going to gently put that back in. Now, a lot of people will airbrush like this. If you want to airbrush like that with no protection on the end, that's fine. I have nearly taken my eye out though. So <laughs> I am using this. Also with this one, I can actually use that to stop, to make sure that the trigger only comes back a certain distance. So if you've got a perfect, to be honest, I do, I like to have the trigger action for the whole thing. But if you've got like a perfect set that you like to use or it's going a certain way, then, you know, you don't want the trigger to come back any further. You can always set that up. That's pretty cool. So uh, next it's all nice and dry now and of course i'm back from picking up my daughter um we're going to go use zarius purple and we're going to coat all of the model with it so effectively we're going to be doing like an undercoat with this zarius purple is a layer paint so we're going to be thinning it again i'm going to be using my water so a couple of drops of water And then I'm going to put a little drop of floor improver in here because this paint is thicker and I can use quite a bit. So I've got, and then of course, I'm going to get my trusty brush. Some people use droppers if you've managed to put these into a dropper bottle, and you're better than me. And I'm going to get two big scoops of this purple and mix them in. Now, that is too runny for me. I need a little bit thicker. So I'll put another couple of scoops in there. Swirl that round. And there we go, that's a little bit thicker. I'm gonna close you up for now. I probably need some more Zarius Purple later. We're gonna back draft it. And then we're going to test it. Now this is actually coming through quite, quite thin. So we are going to, because it is quite thin, it's going to be several layers over this. Now I'm still at 30 PSI because I am doing all the model. It doesn't really matter what areas I'm getting, but I'm doing all the model. And I'm going to go in circular motions. Now don't get me wrong, some of you will be tempted to don't, because if you do that, you're going to ruin it. So you do need to do this in layers. So I'm going to get it all painted up and I'm going to come back to it. So I've coated that completely. As you can see, we've got a bit of a shading, the xenophiles kicking in. And of course you've got bits that are brighter, bits that are darker. I did have to go over it several times. Now, I am now going to lower my PSI to 20. So if you've got a tank that can do that. There we go. And the reason I'm doing that is because we're going to concentrate now on the wings. Now the reason I've lowered this to 20 is so that I can get a tighter, it's basically a less drawn out stream a bit finer because I don't want the membrane to be 
purple. I'm remembering will be a completely different colour. So we are going to paint the arms and the fingers and we're going to do it quite close. So this is where Don't forget, go back on that trigger slowly. Now you might get a little bit of overshadow in there, that's fine, but I don't want to blast it. Don't forget, trusty brush on the fingers. Hope this works. You've got to try and make it match that as best as you possibly can. So we've gone on airbrushed, compressor noise, apologies all the areas that we need to and we're going to highlight them and shade them with the airbrush now i know we've already done the zenithal highlight that will pick up the little bits but we're just wanting to make sure that we're getting some a bit more of a shade i just wanted to add there and a bit more uh, highlight now Juki violet the games workshop shade paints are really good for going through the airbrush because they're already quite thin you just got to make sure because they are quite watery that we are not blasting it and you're just doing it in sort of like a very a very light method now i can just pour this straight and what the beauty of this is if you pour too much in you can just pour it straight back in uh, to this particular pot as you can see that's coming through nicely now because it's not going to act like a shade shade so it's not going to be too runny straight off because it's coming from an airbrush so the air is kind of going to dry it a little but i wanted some shade on there and then just a little bit running underneath and then maybe some towards the scales that good because it's droopy violet and it's just purple anyway that will just just give me what i want Hopefully you can see me. Yeah. Under a sail as it reaches the floor. Any more on the belly. Same applies, the more layers you're going to add, the darker it's going to get. This is just effectively just giving me a nice bit of shading. Where am I? Wait, I'm just going to do the edges of said holes. Don't get me wrong, it will, even though it's quite thin, you can still dry on the needle tip, so it's always a good idea. Make sure that you're cleaning that at all times. 
I'm going to do the holes to the sort of skin might have a discoloration. Oh, now I might have a blockage here. I'm just going to take the end off and have a look. Nope, it's just not. Might have been a bit of a temporary blockage. Sometimes that's the easiest way to check is just to take the end off your, your sort of your nozzle, give it a bit of a wipe with the um, toothbrush, and then just see whether or not it's actually there. It could just be the fact that I'm not put, pulling on the trigger enough. There we go. So it might have had a bit of a blog, and I've managed to get that clear. And then I'm going to do the wings the same. So next, we're going to load up Gene Steeler Purple into the airbrush. Now the airbrush, I've cleaned it out as best I can. Again, we're not doing a massive extensive clean because at the moment there's no need to. We're still using the purples to pinks type of colours. Yep, and that's my compressor kicking in. I had to go and fill up my water bottle as well, so we've got a lot of water to work with. Just a little bit in there. Now, if you put too much in, sometimes it's best just to try and spray it out. A little bit too much water. I'm not wanting a lot of this purple. I'm just wanting it to be a couple of dashes. You can see there, the floor improver. Now, I'm gonna shake up my purple. As you can see, I don't use a lot of air paints. If you are gonna use air paints, personal preference, use Vallejo, don't use workshops, they're not very good. Right, a couple of scoops of that. In we go. Make sure where it's going. That might be. Oh no, 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 no. Getting the consistency that I'm after. I'll just zoom out a little. Again, if you've got like a rounded edge, just put your finger on it. What we're going to do is going to pick, test it first. I'm going to pick certain points that I just want a bit of a highlight on. So, down here maybe. And the further away you are with a bigger stream, the more... There we are. A bit of don't forget that this will dry lighter than what you actually put it on. So don't be too afraid. If you think, oh God, I've put too much on, don't worry too much about it. Try and get that from an angle. Got a bit of a highlight on here. Of course, his face. And as you can see, I'm only putting a little tiny, tiny bit on, and I'm trying to do it from an angle at times. The reason for that is I don't want to oversaturate this with a lot of bright colour. It's very heavily detailed, so I'll probably do that with a dry brush later. the neck now i'm shooting that way so that if i do that way i might get someone here which i don't want so i'm trying to keep a control to make sure there's nothing on the outside Over a little bit here, and as you can see, is that drying? We're just we're only getting a slight tint. So, if you're wanting a bit more, you might want to go back over it. Now, I am using dark colors because it's quite easy to 
correct darker colours and it is lighter ones, especially if you're just learning. And a little bit more here. And a little bit more on the face. If you do it from an angle as well, you will catch the raised edges rather than having it go into everything, which is something that uh, can be quite, it, it's like a dry brush. Because you're not catching everything. I'm going to let that dry, see. I'm going to do the wings and then we'll see if we need that. That one needs another one. Now, the wings, I'm kind of with the wings just pointing out certain points. So, a knuckle bit there, a bit of the arm there, that muscle there. Opposite side doing the same thing. And then on the fingers, I'm going to do the finger ends. I'm going to keep majority of the fingers free of highlight. Now again, finger ends. to one side while that's drying we can make sure that that's going to look okay and then we just get on with the other wing so one of the final highlights i'm going to be doing here so my camera's touching the i think there uh we're going to be hitting some emperor's children into little bits so we can't this is kind of like an extreme highlight so we're going to knock it down to 30 psi we're going to do the usual but I don't need a lot and as you can see that's not completely clean because it's still got a bit of the other colour in that's fine I don't know how much we'll do Empress Children is a little bit thicker than the purples I have been using so I'm going to put one in to start with Let's see what I get. I want a little bit more, just a bit thicker. You will get an eye in for what you're looking for. Yeah, that's all right for me and how I use my airbrush. Again, trying to do a back the draft on it. Brilliant. Now, what I'm also going to try and do with this, especially across the face. I'm going to try just to aim it in one particular direction, but I'm not wanting it to get on the neck. Now, normally you'd be able to do some form of masking technique. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to hold it. <laughs> Doing it very gently. Not a lot. Picking up little bits. There we go. And then down here, again, away so that there's nothing else is going to be catched. Tiny bit. Now, I'm doing a tiny bit. And then I'm probably going to be doing a big ish. Just gonna kind of do that again in certain spots, but I'm gonna do it a bit more concentrated and we're gonna have like a spot of this particular color. So like near his nose. You can see I'm doing that uh, technique of spraying across you just got to imagine the air coming out there, apologies, and that you're just touching it 
so you're touching the paint with the edges of the model. Always keep your gloves on. Nice on that face. Just a bit of back and forth there. Just want to pick it up. A little bit there. We've already got a bit on the tail. Maybe a little bit here. Always give it a little time to dry because you might want to come back into that. So I'm going to move that to one side. Clean the edge of the brush. Right, this one here. Now, I am going to be pretty much be pinpointing certain bits. So I know that that is how the wing is going to be shaped. So I'm going to pick a bit here and he I'm going to pick a bit here. I'm not going to pick that bit, just that bit there. On the underneath of the pad of the hand, I'm going to pick a little bit. And then I think I want to pick a little bit of the ends of the toes. High point on the wings. So let that one dry, go on to the next one, and then you'll be able to start over again. Uh, and just to make sure that if you want it a bit more intense, you can do. Again, I'm looking at to see which way that's going to go on. So that's the pad, that's the underneath. That's the top. So now I've got my kind of purples to pinks done, ish with the airbrush, I'm going to now apply some dry brushing. And you need to make sure that your dry brush is really, really soft. And the reason for that is that you can, you can scrape the paint off. The paint is incredibly thin on these. Now sometimes you can fix it, so if you had some varnish, varnish the figure first if you wanted to try and fix it. I... I do have a varnish, but mine takes ages to dry properly, so I'm kind of trying to get along. So really what I'm going to be doing is dry brushing. Now I dry brush, of course, I've got a large dry brush here. Let's put a little bit of the original, that's for Gene Steeler Purple. And then I just work it into the bristles. I work it into the bristles with some folded up kitchen roll. And then just gently apply the dry brush. Now I'm going to be dry brushing nearly all of it. And I'm going to be avoiding the pink because I'm going to be dry brushing pink onto that. And the reason we're dry brushing is that when you, this will pick up all the little details. Now, if you were a bit making a tank, you just dry brush the edges. This is quite a scaly model. And it's got quite a lot of internal little bits of detail. So I'm just wanting to make sure that I pick all of that out, which you can't do with an airbrush. So pretty much dry brush the entire figure and we'll get on with the next stage. Once you dry brush for Dean Steeler Purple and go on to Empress Children. Now dry brush the Empress Children mainly into the areas where you kind of focused. So like here and then there we did a bit, didn't we? Did a bit there and some on his face 
And then if you want to add bits of Empress Children, you can do. So if you want it over, kind of over, brush it a little, that's fine. And then again, you're going to be doing on the wings. Just going to focus that on the edges and then the palm. Like I said, make sure it's a nice, soft dry brush. Don't use a hard one. You will rip your paint off. If you're not very good with dry brushing, one technique to do is to Focused on raised areas, but like I say, I'm not dry brushing all of that, just dry brushing a bit. Some of the next stages we're going to be doing, even though we're airbrushing, we're still going to use the traditional brush. So these particular wings as an example, I'm going to go over them with a, like a finned version. So I'm going to be looking at some greys. So the scales on his back and these particular wings are going to be looking at grey colours whereas the bone because of course half of his face is missing from here you've got some uh, bones sticking out i'm going to do all the bones in a, a bone colour so that's why i'm not really normally out with flesh colours i'm making fleshy but that's going to kind of mix with the bone colour and it's not really going to give much separation so i'm kind of going to do the wings like a grey and then i will be finishing that off with a particular dry brush maybe in time and school just to give it a bit of of the fact that it doesn't look like concrete but we are going to paint the wings first so i'm going to get my fin paint and then we're going to paint the wing and we're also going to paint these particular scales so we're going to use some dawn stone because that does have a hint of a, a brownie color i'm going to get my old brush here i'm going to thin it down a little on my wet palette you can use a normal dry palette just do your normal thinning i'm going to try to avoid multiple coats now if you can Gonna hold them, try and hold them by the claws because we're gonna be painting the claws later. And then I'm gonna paint this using my brush. And then when I get to the edges, I'm gonna use a very thin brush and make sure that I don't go into any of that airbrushing that we've already done. And I'm gonna do that on the scales as well. Right, so all the grey is now painted, and like I say, I've painted it by hand, and the reason for that is so that I can get right up to the edges without having an overspray. So now that I've done that, I am going to go back to the airbrush, and we're going to use a lighter grey to now highlight all these pieces. So, about to get the grey on again, I've not got my gloves on, because I tore them. <laughs> So I'll just quickly do this one. Right, so flow improver in. Now be careful. Like I said, with the lighter colours, you are always going to get a form of a more than likely to block. And I'm just going to use one screw this time because it's quite a thick paint. That might be a little too runny. So just a bit more. Compressor. Yep, right, so I'm just going to need to knock down the PSI. So I've knocked down my PSI, I'm cleaning the end, and we are going to effectively put a highlight in these ridges. And I'm going to try and aim for the center. So you've got to be very careful, I don't want to go off that. It's a high pigment paint, so I will be doing the end of this quite often. And I'm going to try and keep it as still as I can to make sure I don't overspray onto other areas. Oh, 
What I certainly don't want is anything to go onto the purple. So be very gentle, be very careful. I'm making sure that I'm just getting into the center line of that. I don't want anything over splashing. And then if you want it brighter, Again, just the usual, and go over it one more time. So it's starting to look like it's got a nice highlight running across the centre. I'm going to do that bit, and then we're going to come onto the wings. So onto the wings. I'm on full 30 PSI, and pretty much I'm just going to follow the Xenophil highlight that I did earlier. I'm not going to go too close to the edge because what I don't want is to, for it to interfere with the purple. This is definitely coming on. So what we're going to do now, we're going to get some Agrax Surf Shade. I'll find it eventually. There we go. And we're going to coat all of the wings and all of this grey in an Agrax Surf Shade colour. I'm going to use what's called a Games Workshop large shade brush or a large brush, something with some nice soft bristles. I might need a bit of water in there. And I'm just going to just coat. And use the uh, view out of the way. I'm just going to coat the wings in this. And then I'm going to get some tissue and just go over it. Because I don't want the middle bit to be Agrax, but I want it to be in certain sections. So it gives it's going to give that particular look. And I'm going to do that to all of the wings. Okay, so I've Agrax scales, I've dabbed them off with the tissue, as you can see. Dirty tissue there. I'm just been to the toilet. <laughs> and I've done that to the wings as well. The wings are a bit more dry. And uh, once we get, uh, once it's completely dry, we're going to get a dry brush on there. Now, while we're waiting for that to dry, let's concentrate on the rider. So I've got my cloak, and we've got the arm of it had a tiny bit of a zenithal highlight. Now what we're going to do is kind of like a glazing slash contrast technique. Uh, the cloak, we're going to have it black because that's going to uh, be completely different to the giant um, figure that we've actually got, the dragon. So we're going to paint the coat black now with the Xenophil highlight. With it being contrast black Templar, this should give us a nice gradient to grey. will settle in all the places we need it to settle. Now when working with contrast paint, you've got to make sure you actually get quite a bit. I find that you need to get quite a bit on your brush. And then you've got to kind of work it in. Work, make sure it works into all them recesses. If it doesn't, you end up with a big white blob or a lighter blob. You don't want one. As you can see already that's starting to work its magic. Now what we're going to do with the armour, I want a very deep red. Now normally you'd paint red, but I don't want to do that. I'm wanting a little bit different. I'm going to actually paint several layers of Karaberg Crimson onto the actual armour itself. So... We're just basically going to paint it on as if it was a contrast paint. And again, make sure that you get into all the nooks 
and crannies. So it's probably going to take about three coats of Caraberg Crimson to get the really dark red that I'm after. Um, so while that's drying, I'm going to uh, dry brush some Tyrant Skull into this grey. Now the reason I'm using Tyrant Skull is this will give me the kind of bony look that I'm after without being born. And I'm going to use a dry paint, dry brushing again. And this is very, very, this is going to be a very, very weak dry brush. It's not going to be very strong. I don't want it to be very strong. I just need it to pick up the edges. And then it should match the Agrax Earth shade perfectly. So I'm just... Do have another pot of this, thankfully. Oh, it's a bit much. And see, I'm wiping the majority of that excess off. And I'm just kind of going in one direction. Bit of twig there for some reason. I'm going to do that on the whole model. So if you can see from that there, we've got some nice sort of transition on that. And it makes it look like a scaly beast. And then that makes it look kind of slightly dead and dirty, as well as being new. Now, this model does have um, a lot of breakaways leading to some internal organs. Um, you're best off because I don't personally don't think the actual casting is that great. I'm not quite sure what I'm looking at, so I'm going to actually get a picture out. So anything that would look like it's a flesh tear or internal organs, I'm going to paint around the bone, put a line of this, but also while I'm doing that, we're going to be dry brushing this one. So this is that deep browny red that I was after. Just putting those layers of caribou crimson and then I'm going to dry brush corn red over the top. I'm also going to dry brush a little bit of administratum grey into the cloak. I painted the cloak with that black contrast paint and as you can see it's come up quite nice. I just need to finish off those edges with a bit of dry brush work. Yes, I use a lot of dry brush work. Get used to it. Right, so I do need a smaller brush. This is where your old brushes come in handy. If you see my video about brushes, you'll know that I keep a series of nice, expensive and cheap. And then, of course, when you're cheap, gets uh, gets worn out, then you can always use it as a dry brush, especially some of the smaller brushes, because you're not wanting to have large dry brushes all the time. So we're going to dry brush first. And I'm just going to dry brush the legs. And what I'm going to do, because I want to dry brush the grey... I'm going to do the grey first, and the reason I'm going to do that is simply to do with me not wanting to clean out the brush straight away afterwards, because of course the grey, the red, the pigment stays on the brushes. You try dry brushing with a dry brush that's been used for reds or really dark colours, it'll still stay on there. So dry brushing the grey, tiny bit on the brush, not a lot, and then of course swirling it around the bristles, get the majority of that work off. And then just starting off with the edges. Maybe something a little further up every now and again, but nothing like that ridge there. But nothing major. And there you go, you've got a nice black cloak. So that easy washes off. There will still be a bit of grey on your brush. There always is a bit of paint left. Unless you you know you clean it with master's brush soap. So now let's get the red. And you'll see why. Because the red actually does stain your brush a little bit. Especially some of these lighter ones. Uh, right, I want this to be a bit heavy. Test it on your palm sometimes. You can tell if it's picking stuff up or if it's still painting. If it looks like it's picking up the ridges. See it out there? You might not be able to. Um, then you know you're okay. And then 
Just dry brush this all over. I've taken too much off that initial dry brush. So if you can see that there, that's the kind of work that we're looking at. It gives it a slight metallic look as well, to be honest. But it's just deep red. Very deep armour red. Right, so we'll be coming back to this one. Let's get on with the reds. So thinning down my red using a wet palette. Make sure I'm going to keep it nice and consistent. And we're going to go... Now if we check out this wing here, we've got some bone. Now I don't think I want to do that bit. And I'm not quite sure about doing that bit there. Hmm. There might not be a lot for me to do on that one. That looks kind of muscly. Ah, right, so there's a slice there. And uh, I'm only wanting the tip. I might get a smaller brush for that one. But at least this bit here, I'm going to paint this one in red. Some nice smooth brush strokes. There we go. So we'll just paint these in. Uh, like I say, I'll get a smaller brush for the others. And we're just going to block those in for now. Ah, small brush, there you are. So as you can see, we've got some flesh covered in. Now, with some of this, this is mainly going to be bone, and I've put the red on to sort of have it as a divider. Um, now the other red has got like organs and flesh. That red we're now going to highlight. So I've got some Evil Sun Scarlet. We're going to thin it down. Again on our wet palette. So we're probably going to mix in a little bit of corn red. Just to darken it off initially. And then probably go over everything else again. Mm, that'll do. Maybe a bit of that, yeah, maybe a bit of that. A bit more of that. Might be a bit too, need a bit more runny. Yay for homemade wet pellets. Right. Now what I'm going to do... is just block it out by going lines down. I'm probably going to need a couple of finished coats. Just to highlight some of this, but I'm only going to highlight the one that's kind of got musculature. If it's mainly bone, and this is just an edge, outer but I'm not going to do it so if you can just see that I'm slowly but surely building up those highlights this one I'm going to go across because of course it's the tail and I'm actually just making sure that the brush is going the same way I am not changing the brush's direction so on the tail I'm going like this and everything else I'm going up and down and you may like I say you may have to do a dunk on this and you might have to do a couple of thin coats don't forget to do it as well on your wing arms now I've laid that up and just to finish certain sections we're going to go with an orange Like these veins, for example, just gonna put a bit of the orange on there. And we're gonna do a little tiny bit of edge highlighting. This is a um, troll slave that I'm using. And I'm mainly 
they're going to just do, like I said, I've not done the bits that are going to be born, but I'm mainly just doing the bits that will be fleshy. Such as the tongue and the teeth. And I'm probably not apart from that big one there. And now, once you've done this, we're going to go into the bone. Right, so I'm going to start off with Talan sand. We've got a fresh, well, cut sheet for our homemade wet palette. What we're going to do is to Put satellite sand, a couple of layers of this on first, and then I'm going to blend up to your shabti bone, and then I'm going to add even more white to your shabti bone and make that even brighter because we're going to dull that back down later with a shade of seraphin sepia. So, all the bone I'm going to now paint in Talan sand, and if any of it's got some like red overlay i'm just going to try and keep it as red as i possibly can like i say you will need a couple of coats of this next stage then i've mixed one and one to line sand with your shabti bone it's on my wet palette you don't have to use a wet palette for it but uh I have to try and keep it nice and we're just going to put this leaving the recesses over the bone and they're slowly but surely going to be blending up now don't worry about a couple of coats on this i'm wanting it to be quite thin because it's uh, uh we're going to be adding a little bit more you shabti bone and then going over it again and then possibly some pure Yushabti bone, followed by Yushabti bone and white. Now with this one, I'm just kind of painting it on. I'm not doing anything particular. Brush strokes are not going a certain way, but once we start highlighting more, I'm wanting the brush strokes just to be downwards only. And we might even start using thinner and thinner brushes. Get the light right, there we are. Okay, so uh, we've mixed it and now I'm going to add a bit more Yushabti. Another two lots to that, make it quite bright, make it more like a bone. And again, we're just going to repeat what we did before. I'm just going into the bone, but this time around what we're going to do is to create lines. So... I'll show you on the bigger piece. You see that there? I'll get some of my... This is an older brush. Try to create a flat head to it. And then I'm just... Kind of going down. And I'm just doing it in lines. And if you leave bits, that's fine. I'm going to do that both sides. And then on some of the smaller stuff, like on here... Change your brush type to a smaller brush, and that will allow you to do the lines properly. So, right, just up and down, no, no side by side, just up and down. So now we've got that. This horns are looking pretty good. Bone is coming on quite nicely. We are going to just go pure your shabty bone. And we are going to use a very thin brush to be able to do this. And again, we're just going to go vertical lines, if we possibly can. Of course, just lines following the bone sometimes. But uh, I'm not going to need too much. Careful when you're picking it up. And you can leave bits if you want. Not an issue.
let's make sure you get that ridge there and then up and down up and down and this is creating our ball effect and I'm gonna kind of skip ahead because basically what you're gonna do is exactly the same thing again just doing adding a bit more white to the shabdi bone and creating kind of the same look and the same effect now we've painted the bone a little bit brighter than i wanted and the horns we're going to hit it with two different inks so this is to sort of bring it back down um to what we want to make the transitions look really really smooth we're going to hit all the bony bits with seraphim sepia i'm wanting them to be a bit brighter and all the things that are like horn or items that would normally be out anyway so all these and these and maybe some of the teeth because i've not really highlighted the teeth for sale i kept them a bit darker we're going to highlight we're going to actually put agrexo said wash all over so with seraphim sepia you should guys you're not quite sure how to use washers with the seraphim sepia as well going into the bone if his wounds i'm going to include the red so we're just going to put this all over And just give it an all over wash. Don't matter if you get it a little bit on the scales. That might just add to uh, any particular damage this creature has received. Make sure you give it a good, good wash in there. So inks are drying on these and the wings. And you can see there's slightly different shades of the horn to the bone uh, because we used two different shade colours. Now we're going to go on to this little lady and we're going to basically paint up the shields. Shields are going to be painting up using, I think it's, I was going to say Scorpion Brass, but it's Screaming Bell. So I'm going to paint them up with Screaming Bell and I'm going to hit them with an Agrax Earthshade Gloss. Apologies, I've changed my mind. I've painted that up with Screaming Bell, letting that dry. While that's dry, we're going to layer up this shield white. And then we're going to paint the actual dragon the same purple as we're painting this. Probably not as detailed, but... Um, so to paint the shield up white, I'm first going to... I'm going to get my wet palette out again, because we're going to need to start thinning stuff. Move you over there while you're drying. So I'm going to start off with Administratum Grey, and I'm going to paint, apologies, I think my voice is going, I'm going to paint the whole shield in this colour now. Because this is a grey going over a black, you're going to need two, maybe three coats of this, just to make sure. So, apologies, I've not done both shields. Uh, that. What I've done is used Administratum Grey and painted up that shield. And I'm going to paint that shield like a white. Um, so... The next colour I'm going to paint that shield is actually going to be Ufuan Grey. That's quite a nice, very bright colour. Um, I'm going to put that... Sorry, computer. I'm going to put that on and then, of course, do a bit of more highlighting, as it were, with the white. And then this I'm going to be applying with a very small brush because I want it to be right in my detail. Uh, the Ufuan Grey needed to have two thin coats. This one might also be the same. I'm going to try and avoid the dragon as best I can. That seems to be quite nice. So the dragon, I'm actually going to paint with the, straight on with the Gene Steeler Purple. I'm kind of going to cheat a little bit. So we're going to paint on the Gene Steeler Purple, and then once the Gene Steeler Purple, probably again, two coats, uh, but once it's dry, we're going to be looking at uh, just washing it with some Drooky Violet, uh, just so we can kind of get through it quick and we're not going to be doing the arms a different color you will have to do unfortunately multiple thin coats with jean steel purple it is not the thickest paint so i'm currently waiting for the jean steel purple to dry i've added some shepty bone to the skulls while we're waiting for that to dry jean steel purple is it takes a while it's a very thin well mine is anyway a very thin layer paint 
and especially when you kind of water it down it goes on very thin so i'm having to do about three maybe four layers on that i'm going to um just paint this now with agro Associate gloss so that can be drying while we're waiting uh, for the other bits to dry as well so get your shade brush you should be used to which brushes to to use hopefully by now and then just give that a good make sure that it's getting into all the nooks and crannies i'm not really going to be looking at highlighting this or i might do it with a maybe a bit of silver or maybe even with a bit of the uh, original paint i'm just wanting to get it all nice and dark there yeah so we've got the Agrexo shade drying. I've done another layer of Jean Steeler Purple. We are waiting for that to dry. I'm now going to add some Gracia onto the face. And we're going to make it look quite a pale figure. Um, so I'm going to be using a contrast paint, a grey contrast paint for the actual face. Um, so I'm just going to water down a little bit of the uh, Gracia. We're going to put it onto the face over all the flesh. We're going to be doing a Duncan, two thin coats. Just remember, if you don't have a wet palette, I hopefully have included a link to create your own. It's not difficult to use. Just keeps your paints nice and thin. Allowing for easy transition from brush to the surface. And should be it for the face. And then we're gonna let that dry and do a second coat. Gracie is a lot dry, quicker drying, so hopefully we'll be able to get it all done at the same time. Apologies, I feel like I'm I'm telling fibs here. Um I've actually gone and painted the back end of a cloak and bits of her hair with the grace here, but I've only done one coat because I'm kind of wanting a lot of the dark uh, colours to coming through. I have gone over a face again with a second coat and again while we're waiting for all of that to dry I'm just going to paint the sword with some lead belcher so that's just some darkish silver going over all of the sword area if you can with metallics just try and keep you know putting a bit of water on them don't use, I, I don't thin metallics down too much. I just thin them down to the point where they flow smoothly. Um, some metallics you can use straight from the pot if you want, depending of course upon the look, but they can be a very thickish paint, so and they can be a bit fickle. So use wisely. And I also quickly gave the, um, the actual riding seat, I gave that a once over, apologies, not in the camera. Give that once over with the contrast paint, the Black Templar contrast paint. Um, that's simply to uh, give it a darker feel. You're not really going to be able to see it once it's on the dragon. Um, so I'm kind of just trying to keep that away. You're not, you know, again, I don't want to overload everybody. We are trying to teach people tricks and hints and tips. Sometimes not painting something is a really good idea just to be able to hide it away in the background. Now. We're going to have a lot that's still drying so i can't really highlight that but we're going to be doing a lot of the faces and the everything else really <laughs> and i'm going to be sort of using a small base brush for a lot of this now our skin we're going to be using griff charger gray our hair we're going to be using black templar and the bit on the back find my brown There's a brown in here somewhere. Oh, there is. Wildwood. That's the cloak on the back is going to be Wildwood. So I'm going to paint them first, and then we're going to hit it with some washers on the shield. So I know I've used a few contrast paints already, but the great things about these is that you don't really need... And I like to use these contrast paints now when it's a smaller area, one that's not really going to have a lot of attention. You know, majority of people are going to be looking at the dragon. They're not really going to be looking at the rider that much. And just to try and keep yourself sane and your sanity up, sometimes a contrast paint is a good way of kind of cheating uh, just to get a paint effect on. And that 
grey is going to give her a very nice dark looking skin tone. A very pale looking skin tone. And you can even highlight it a little bit if you want to afterwards. Um, it's just I'm not going to go over and above um, with the washes, the fleshes, everything else. Wildwood on the back. It's actually gone on quite heavy. Didn't want it to go on that heavy, but thankfully this is not a quick drying material, so I'll be able to clean my brush out and get little bits out of. I mean, don't get me wrong, contrast is not good for all things. I don't think it does reds very well. And if you are going to use a red, I would highly recommend using the red and then uh, like a Caraberg Crimson over the top. That actually gives you a nice, it actually does give you a nice looking red, but you have to use a bit of work. So that's the cloak. And then the hair. As you can see, we're pretty much getting that done quite quickly because we are using contrast paints. And because I've painted the hair streaky, that's going to show in the highlights as streaks. That's not really going to come up as something that's huge and maximum. And that's going to give us our dark witch feel. So I've got my shades out now while we're waiting for contrast to dry. We've got the Druky Violet, which I'm going to put on first. Be very careful. I don't want it to bleed out into that white. Because I'm being very careful, I might put a couple of layers of this on. Brush is splitting, that's never a good sign. I don't want it too heavy, but I don't want it light now either. And then a tiny dollop of seraphine sepia. Yes, I do have my brush in my mouth. On each of the skulls. And then Null Oil, use a proper shade brush on that one. That's going to go all over the sword. And I'm trying to do this, I try and put a heavier amount towards the bottom and then kind of drag it up the sword so that you're not you're getting less and it's more shinier as you get to the top. So, next set of uh, colours is actually going to be, I'm going to be painting the leather. Now, the dragon does have some leather on it as well. Uh, mainly these straps running across the front. And of course, you've got the foots leading up to the syrup, uh, stirrups. Now, because that's still drying a little, I'm going to show you how to do it on this. We've got three, well, we've got Rhinoxide and Doom Bull Brown. And we've also got Agrax Earth Shade. So what we're going to do is just to sort of blend these two. So we're going to start off with some Rhinox and then we're going to work up to Doomball, kind of going across the middle so as if it's a natural highlight and then we coat everything. So starting here, I'm working our way around, it's actually quite a good texture. The texture on this one for the dragon. This works quite well though, just on a flat. Flat surface. So let's get cracking with this. So next I've mixed 50-50 Rhinox Hide with Mornfang Brown. It's not Mornfang Dumbo. Apologies. Brighter. It's 
easy on a wet part, make sure it's nice and finish. And then I'm kind of just going to be picking edges. If you can see that, hopefully. Picking edges and kind of just doing that. As if it's little bits of light catching the leather. Like across there as an example of an across there. Across the attachments. And doing this while the other one's still wet so I can get a nice flow. And then I've already done her, it's only on a little bits of stirrups where we're just going to be doing down at the bottom, but you're probably not going to see it too much on this figure. Then once we've done that, clean out your brush. And we're going to go for pure doom ball. And try and get it in the centre of what we've already done. Of course, along some edges. Little bits of odd highlighting. And a lot of this, I'll be honest with you, is probably going to get swept away. So don't be too crazy with it. Yeah, that's some nice subtle hints. Let that dry fully. And then hit it. Cover it all with a shade brush with the Agrax Earth shade. So... We're now going to be looking at highlighting some of these silver and metal elements. I've also just done a little bit of silver, some uh, lead belcher into these areas. I'm not really looking to put ink on them. I'm just wanting to highlight them. So we're going to be two, doing two lots of different highlights. We're going to be highlighting the shield and the sword. And we're going to be using a dry paint, Necron Compound. I'll be honest, a hell of a lot of people use this for the highlighting silver. It's, it's pretty good. I'm going to use a big large brush hoping that the red we dry brushed on it is not going to come off no we're good um so onto the sword just trying to catch the edges And on here, I'm going to lightly, again, just try and catch the edges of what's happening. So let's dry and wash that brush. And then, my paint's probably going to need changing soon. I always try and change your paint as frequently as you can as well. You don't want cross-contamination. And then we're going to use some room friend steel back on the wet palette so we can lighten it up. Make it easier to manipulate back onto the tiny brush that we've got. Now, I actually am using a cheap tiny brush. And the reason I'm using a cheap tiny brush is simply because it's getting a lot of wear. And I don't want the expensive ones to be ruined. So stirrups. Paint at the edges. I'm going to... Trying to pick your paint some of the edge of that. Just to make it stand out. And then I'll try and pick. I need to thin this down a little bit more. Pick certain edges on this. Like that there, that there. Try and give it a little bit more definition and shine. I'm nearly complete. The last things to do is some eyes. Now I have gone and done the eyes on this. All I've done is painted little red dots and I didn't really show it on camera simply because if I did show it on camera, uh, 
you'd just see me struggling, pulling a massive golem face, trying to achieve it. I think that was a bit blurry, apologies. So I'm going to base it with the eye. The eye is going to be a few and grey. This is the eye on this side of the actual miniature. Little tiny bit. Up and down just a smidge. Try it to run smooth. I'm going to try my best bracing myself. Fill. Oh. Right. So a full engraved first, and then I'm going to put some white scar in there. And then, of course, we're going to put a black. And that's going to be for the pupil. If you want to do something a bit more elaborate, you can do. I am not going to. A tiny bit of water. Again, pulling a golem face, but not as much as I was earlier. And I'm wanting the white to be more towards the front, so all I'm going to do... Okay, just drag it across. There we are. It's looking nice and bright. And now I just need a black. So I've got my Abaddon black. I'm going to thin it down. Let's walk to a skinny brush. Again, we're gonna that might be too watery, but not... yeah, I think that might be a bit too watery. Get back up again. Trying to keep a blob, as it were, on there. We are going to. Yeah! So it kind of looks like he is looking at you. That's fine. I hate painting eyes. I really do. Thankfully, the uh, countless one was all right with two little tiny red dots. But again, make sure you're filling that. I didn't show that on camera because if you, do, you don't have to. One of the biggest errors and a lot of what pe why people sometimes don't like painting vampires or people with uh, without helmets on in you know like space marines or anything of that nature or hate painting people with guys that don't like doing eyes sometimes you don't have to do it people are not going to be picking it up all the time going where's the eyes uh, as long as you do your shading right so if you use a bit of uh, shading in there you're going to be able to get it done correct you're going to be able to crack it no problem and then for more important characters you can do the eyes if you want to but always make sure you've got a really small brush when doing that this is pretty much, apart from the skull on the front, which we're just going to do with your shabty bone, and then highlight, we'll just go over that with uh, some seraphine sepia. We're pretty much ready to assemble the model. Right, so we are about ready to varnish this bad boy. Now, I'm going to varnish it before I put the base on, simply because I keep knocking some of the edges, and I keep rubbing off, because... I didn't varnish earlier, every now and again I keep rubbing off little bits that I don't want to rub off. So we're going to be um, using some Vallejo Mecha Varnish. There we are. Zoom out a little. Um, how I'm going to do this is I've got my uh, airbrush, made sure that it's completely clean. I'm going to put some water in. Uh, that might be a bit too much water, so I'm just going to spray it out. Put enough water as if I was uh, varnishing a load of figures and I'm not. And then I spray mecha varnish all over myself. Lovely. And I pour it in. Probably about equal amount varnish and water. And then I uh, do the back drafting. Make sure mecha varnish is not coming out. Yep, it is. And then we give... The model, it's spray. So it's going to have an all over spray. Making sure to get them underneath. 
and then of course on top and I turn it round now the wings are not actually glued on because the client has stated that they don't want it gluing on for ease of transportation so they are kind of pinned in at this moment in time and I've just got it off I think Now, ah, I'm getting a bit foggy in here. Macavarnish will, uh, it says it's free to touch after 15 minutes, but to be honest with you, it's still tacky. I would give it a solid hour. And then once I've done it for a solid hour, I'm going to do a basin. And uh, this, I've got multiple tutorials on how to do a basic base. So I'm going to try and link one up there. Of course, have a look at the uh, painting tutorials playlist. And then you can pick one. Just a bit of a tip, uh, once you've used uh, Mecha Varnish in your airbrush, it can become sticky. So make sure that you clean your airbrush out properly after use. And I'm talking using proper cleaner and then possible dismantlement as well. Just to make sure that you are not... I do wear a mask. Just to make sure none of the stickiness is going to actually just get stuck in there because it, it, it is one of the worst things to clog up your airbrush. I think we're going to put a bit of uh, airbrush cleaner in there, quite pure. And we'll crack on with cleaning this. There we have it. The wings are not glue glued in, but uh, I've even put a bit of the old hard coat into the wounds just to make them look a little fresh and down the barrel of the mouth. Hard coat is a really good way to make things look shiny and possibly watery, maybe a little wet. I do have some water effects, but that will be too much for this particular model. And there we have it. I've done the base quite dark because the figure itself is quite bright. Uh, just to make sure that we're getting... Zoom in a little. Just make sure that we're getting a really good looking model. Well, thank you very much for following this. Hopefully this tutorial will help people with airbrushes and uh, just sort of the basic beginnings uh, with your painting as well. And I'm going to try and do a few more if I can. There might be some others, uh, of course, that are going to be a little bit different, maybe a bit more uh, quick pan, sort of like do this, do this, do this, um, depending, of course, upon what time I've got. And yeah, I've got lots of stuff on the uh, horizon here. Right. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification button for more. I try and get a battle report out every Friday, painting video out every Saturday. Well, thanks very much. We'll see you next time.